And so it begins, ladies and gentlemen. The first match fixing bans have been lifted courtesy of ESL, which has just recently been announced before I started recording this video. And so I wanted to give some initial thoughts and reactions to this. This is gonna be a little bit scatterbrained because I didn't like put an outline together for this video like I normally do with my content, but it was just really exciting news that I wanted to jump on it right away and just kind of give my thoughts as of course, you know, being a, a, a guy from North America and, and the I buy power players being involved in this, this is this something that is near and dear to me and something that you know alongside many others have kind of been hoping for and fighting for and trying our best to to help if, if we possibly could to see if there was some way that we could you know through a grassroots efforts try to to reverse these bans and try to give these players a second chance at competing again because while what they did was certainly wrong and while what they did was certainly deserving of punishment i think that there's definitely uh, you know, some type of, of gap between what is reasonable uh, punishment and what is, is going too far. And if certainly the community will be split on this, on what they feel is enough punishment and what they feel is, is not enough. You know, some people may still think that they should have lifetime bans. Some people may think that they should have been unbanned a long time ago. You know, for me personally, I think a year would have been enough, especially in a situation where there weren't really any official rules laid down or regulations laid down yet. It was such a gray area. It was such a different time in CS goes lifespan you know there's so many things that you can add to the context of the situation where i think that this should have been resolved much longer ago but the past is the past and this is the present and so i am excited to see this happen of course not just the i buy power players are impacted by this but also players from epsilon as well as other match fixing situations have taken part in the scene over the years and now for the future apparently any future match fixing situations at least for esl will carry a five-year ban whereas cheating is still a two-year ban which might be another topic to discuss in the future on, on what we think about those regulations but nonetheless the immediate and, and maybe most you know important story or biggest story that people are talking about this are the fact that you know the former match fixing players are at least going to be able to compete in esl events which i imagine means that they'll be able to compete in esl pro league or mountain dew league if they play in a lower league and they also should be invited to future ESL events or at least be uh, have the ability to qualify for them, such as, you know, ESL one events, as well as I imagine IEM events, if, if I had to guess, as, as they're kind of all related. Um, now, as far as what this could mean, I mean, at least this means that these doors have been open, at least these opportunities are out there for these players. But it also could set off a chain reaction for a bunch of other, you know, bands to be lifted in the scene. You know, I know James Bardoff put out a tweet today to like kind of keep an eye on the space. So there's certainly, you know, a hint there that perhaps Face It and vis vis ECS might be doing some unbanning as well, which would be another league that these players will be able to compete in now. You also have to imagine that Dream has due to the fact that they're owned by the same parent company as ASL, I believe, which is MTG. I believe that's still the case. And just because there is a relationship there, you know, for example, DreamHack qualifiers are run on the ESCA client, and there's definitely ties there. Um, you certainly would think that DreamHack for their open events and Masters events may also be considering lifting the bans on these players as well. So it could start this domino effect that will continue to open up even more doors for these players. Now, obviously, the big one is still Valve, right? They're just still the huge gatekeepers on whether or not these players will ever be allowed to compete in the major system you know being in minors being in major qualifiers having a chance at a major again you know that's still certainly a, another big step that who really knows what will ever happen i mean their stance is still indefinite which you know means could be tomorrow that they get gun unbanned could be that they never get unbanned you don't know indefinite is, is, is obviously a, a term that leads to ambiguity on on what the lifespan of their bands mean in, in a valve official setting but at the very least, these players will be able to compete again in some capacity. And of course, you know, many of the big name players that come to mind when you think about this unbanning, of course, guys like Dazed and Steel, AZK and Swag, you know, those are the main ones that come. But of course, there's like FXO and then the guys from Epsilon as well. And, you know, in the French scene. And then, of course, there, there's a few other cases of players from maybe smaller name teams that will also be affected by this that will now also be able to compete. And... I mean, it's just the initial reactions coming out now, so it's still not really known what all the fine details are, but 
again, this is just great news. I'm, I'm happy to see this happen. I know many other people react to this in a positive way as well. Hell, even Richard Lewis, the one who broke the story that led to a lot of these bans, has also been fighting for a very long time to try to get their bans shortened or lifted or what have you. You know, it's certainly something that has kind of plagued him. Uh, I think he was right for what he did in reporting it. Justice had to be served. And again, I think they did deserve to be punished, but I think that it just went a bit too far for a bit too long. And I'm glad there's finally at least some partial resolution taking place in the community with at least ESL. And like I said, hopefully others will follow suit. And so this is certainly exciting times for these players. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they integrate back into the community in a competitive fashion because you have to imagine a lot of the top teams and top players are probably not going to want to play with these players for the simple fact that you know, they're focused on still being able to go to majors, you know, you know, you kind of taking that sacrifice to give up the ability to play majors, you know, to incorporate these players into your team, no matter how good they are and how much impact they might be able to have, you know, the better your team, that is definitely a big decision that you have to make if you want to take yourself out of that running, so to speak, to be at Valve official events, to be able to, to play with these guys. Uh, it does raise the question, are you going to have maybe some type of rotating roster where you include these guys for, you know, everything else, but then you have players you bring in for, you know, things involving the major um, or does it just mean that these players kind of band together, you know, knowing that they have these boundaries, that they kind of form their own team together as one unit and, and just try to see what they can do between themselves. There already has been talk about this, by the way. I'm pretty sure Swag on his stream, or maybe he's known by Brax now. I think Brax is better, but whatever. I know he's kind of been floating around with the idea of maybe being Brax, but I'll just refer to him as Swag because that's what people know him as mostly. Um, Swag did mention on his stream shortly before I started recording this that the core three of his new team looks like it would be Days and AZK. Now, this does make sense to kind of band together again because of the boundaries that are still, uh, you know, on you right now that, you know, it, it makes sense to, to kind of just kind of stick together. It also is a pretty solid core three if they can get back into form. I mean, to be honest with you, the roles fit. They have experience playing with each other. There's there's some familiarity and chemistry there. Um, they probably could work well together. Again, it just depends on if they can work their rust off and get back into good form. I mean, I know guys like Days and Swag have still been, you know, pretty active playing rank S and like actually playing the game. Someone like AZK has obviously been, you know, in the professional Overwatch scene. He's been playing with Liquid for quite some time in Overwatch. And I think he's dabbled in some arena shooters as well, like Reflex. And I think he was even maybe testing the waters in Quake Champions. So I don't know. Like, he's kind of been all over the place. So I don't know how much CSGO he's played lately and so where his level would be. But ACK just seems like the guy who's just a straight-up gamer. And if you let him play a game long enough, he'll get the groove. So I don't imagine it would be too hard for him to get back to some decent level in CSGO if he hard committed to it and put in the hours but it does raise this interesting question on would he give up playing professional overwatch or quake or whatever other games he wants to play and 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 go back to csgo you know knowing that there's going to be limitations on him in csgo that's not going to exist for him in other esports titles you know if overwatch league becomes big and he's able to be a part of one of the the franchises of overwatch league is that more financial opportunity for him or not and again there's not going to be limitations opposed against him there he's not going to have to worry about not being a part of the biggest events in the game because th those boundaries won't be there for him or is it a situation where he'd be able to play CSGO with, you know, Days and Swag and whoever else they get, and then maybe he still competes in Quake Champions on the side or, you know, what have you. I mean, I'm not really sure what his options are in that regard, what contractual limitations are going to be against him. I have no idea, you know, so that's going to be interesting in itself in his case, whereas guys like Days and Swag, they've been sticking with CSGO streaming, trying to be involved as much as they could. Days obviously did some broadcasting work. Uh, you know, doing commentary for EPL and doing analyst work for ECS and other events as well. So they definitely tried to remain a part of the scene as much as they can. And they still, you know, had fruitful careers in the scene, you know, as personalities, as streamers. And so their commitment definitely seems to be there. But it'll be interesting to see how that all shapes up. I think that would be a sick core three, like I said, provided they could get back in form. Now, I imagine Swag can. He's already kind of proven that, right? At the end of 2015, he played in an RGN event and did pretty well. And then at CS Summit, he filled in for, for Cloud9 for Skadoodle, I think it was, and he was playing against teams like NIP and SK, and he was putting up really good numbers at that event, and that was not that long ago, despite the fact he had been out of competition for quite a while, obviously. He was still you know able to just show up for a one-off event and put up substantial numbers, so 
seems like he wouldn't have too much trouble getting back in form, and it seems like Dazed wouldn't either. Um, just the fact that they've remained active playing in the game and, and still kind of keeping their mechanics up would, would kind of lend itself to being that, yeah, you know, they still should be able to defrag pretty well. But who knows? You know, you never know what's going to happen once they actually go into an official match setting against, you know, more structured teams that have been competing regularly for the last few years while they've been having to sit out. You know, I, I have no idea. I think in the North American scene, they would immediately be able to make a splash if they had the right fourth and fifth and they're able to, you know, grind the hours and get back in shape. Um, but past that, I have no idea what their levels will really be. It'll also be interesting to see what fourth and fifth they would able to be able to get. Like unless they get other banned players like Steel or, or like some other names, uh, where again there there's not going to be you know any worry about oh like some players kind of sacrificing his chance to play at majors to play with you guys. You know, other than that, I'm not really sure how it would work out. I mean, I certainly think that some younger players who probably wouldn't be making a major anytime soon anyway could benefit from playing with these guys and getting that experience and and you know you know getting that development from from some of these guys who do have a ton of experience from their past in the game and certainly can still probably play at a high level. Uh, there, there's plenty of young players who could benefit from that. If they're willing to say, hey, I'm going to kind of play with this team for the next six months to a year, what have you. Yeah, I'm going to sacrifice my right to play at majors, but I might be able to get long-term benefits out of this. And who knows, maybe a year from now, you know, you, if you stick together and things work out, maybe they, their bands will get lifted from Valve too. Who really knows, right? You can't really plan that far ahead. But maybe in the short term, at least, for some younger guys, it might be worth their while to, you know, put the major dream aside for a while to play with these guys. You know, I know that Days mentioned guys like Ethan and Breeze. Uh, Breeze, of course, from Energy and Ethan from CLG as people he might be interested in playing with. Uh, certainly, I think the youth of those players and where they're at in their careers, it probably wouldn't hurt them too much to take six months or a year off of, you know, trying for the major circuit to play with these guys and, and get developed more and, and and all that good stuff. Obviously, I don't know what contractual limitations are in place on energy and CLG for those two players, uh, whether that would even be a possibility or not. Certainly, that roster sounds pretty exciting you know you, you know imagine a situation where you have like breezy as like an entry fragger and days being like another days and azk being a part of the control group and then you have someone like swag lurking in a fifth i mean i think that actually sounds like a pretty banger lineup to be honest uh if the personalities mesh well and you know like i said the old guys can get back in form but you know i'm sure there's other young players out there that certainly uh, would be, you know, interesting names to look at. What about some of these players who are young, who are like at the top of Mountain Dew League or at the bottom of Pro League, you know, like Ghost Gaming, like a guy like Wardell or a guy like Neptune or, you know, people talk about Ye. Uh, you know, th these different guys who are in their teens or approaching their young 20s and aren't on big name teams yet. These are certainly also players that, you know, might be able to, um, to do something you know, with, with this opportunity of playing with these guys. So I'm, sh I'm certainly sure that there's options out there. And I, I, I imagine if they can get that core three of Swag, ACK, and Days, I don't, I don't imagine they'll struggle too much to find a fourth and a fifth. It's just, will they be able to find the correct fourth and fifth to be competitive and that they're happy with? And what are their goals going to be anyway? I'm sure they want to be the best that they can be and whatever they're allowed to compete in. But again, you know, with those limitations in place, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. And what if they get FXEO over and they're like, you're going to be our offer. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a, kind of, a, kind of an interesting thing, but uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Obviously once like an official lineup comes to fruition and we know what the fourth and fifth are, I'm sure I'll do a video on that as well or something, but this is just kind of my initial reactions on the unbanning. Definitely really cool stuff. I'm really happy to see that these players will have another crack at competing again. I know that that's their passion. That's what they've wanted to do. You know, they've been kind of chomping at the bit, doing other things, trying to keep that option open. And now, now finally there's a chance you know the door has cracked open a bit at least for them to pursue that once more and hopefully still be able to have productive careers in our scene yes they did something horribly wrong and yes they deserve to be punished but it's not as if in my eyes they deserve to just have their whole careers taken from them forever over what was what took place in the context of the time that it happened and all that good stuff so really really happy to see this happen really hope that they'll do well the other big question will be will they be able to get any real sponsors or any real organizational backing you know if they do get this core three of ack swag and days and they pick up a fourth and fifth is there an org that will pay them salaries and, and you know that they'll you know let them represent i mean i I don't know the answer to that question, you know. Um, certainly, I think that, like, with the brands that these guys have, 
and you know the personalities that they are and the fact that they should be able to compete at at least a high level within north america you know yeah if you're an organization sponsoring this team you're going to give up your right for your organization to be in a major at least for the time that you're sponsoring these players but you're still going to get something out of it right like you're still going to be that org that gave this this team a chance which you know may be positive pr for you you know all publicity is good publicity, I guess, is what some people say. And these people will obviously bring you publicity. Yeah, you'll get flack because there's some people out there in the community who don't want to see these players back. And so they're going to hate you for, you know, giving them a chance. But there's plenty of people out there who would be happy to see these players have a chance to be on an organization again and make a career out of playing again. And so I think that there's a lot of pros and cons to look at if you're an organization looking to perhaps pick up these players. But I think there's enough positive there to where that if you can get over the fact that your organization won't be in a major while you have these players at least for now that you can still gain something from it right so that'll be another interesting thing to see you know how that shapes up what sponsorships and organizations are going to be knocking at the door once they figure out what their lineup will be and again we still have to see what other tournaments they'll be allowed to compete in because if you're an organization you may not be happy with the fact that the only exposure you're going to get is epl and esl events you may want to say okay well yeah, I'm willing to kind of take the hit on not being in a major for sure, but I would still like you guys to be able to compete in other events. There still has to be enough stuff that you can compete in for our brand to get exposed enough for it to be worth it to take that hit on, on the major front or what have you. But again, hopefully we'll see things like DreamHack, like ECS, like other events perhaps also you know start lifting bands as well and giving them even more opportunities and then that will probably make it more attractive for an organization. So anyway, that's just my initial reactions. We'll, we'll set to see how this story develops, and uh, maybe I'll make more content on it as it happens. But it was just really big news. I'm really excited to hear about it. I'm sure a lot of people out there are as well. And uh, yeah, please follow, subscribe for more content. Thanks so much.